far I'm the only participant. It's like we're getting a few more people on, but they need to connect to audio. So we'll just be waiting a couple more minutes before we get started. Have a nice intimate group. If you're just joining us, we're going to get started in just a minute. Um, I am going to um, give everybody um, the ability to talk if they should. Su I don't want to put words in your mouth, but if you could say something like this. Um, I'm going to mute you. I'm going to allow you to talk, um, but you are muted. You can unmute yourself by um, going to, there's a microphone button on the Zoom pan, um, panel, it's usually the leftmost um, icon. It looks like a microphone and says mute underneath it, so, or unmute. Um, also, there's a little thing that pops up that says you're muted if you're talking. Um, I think we're gonna get going now to respect everybody's time. We have a nice intimate group here, so we should be able to, I unmuted people so they could, um, we could have a conversation as well. So, um, I am they're going to welcome everybody to our Thursday webinar series. Today we are talking about advocacy, be the voice. Um, our, I want to thank Ann Sullivan, um, who is our person in DC and her team, Jennifer and Elizabeth, um, Lizzie, we call her. Um, Anne's going to give us an update on policy um, from the federal, from D.C. Anne's the president and founder of Madison Services Group, and we've been working with Anne. I, Anne, I think I, almost ever since I started, so that's kind of that's kind of exciting. And um, um, 
Uh, for state policy, we're going to hear from Jesse Torres. Jesse is a long friend of Cameo. Am I? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, because it says unmute. You're unmuted. Unmuted. That's weird. Um, uh, Jesse's, Jesse's a long friend of Cameo. Um, he, currently, he's a partner with Biltmore Group um, in LA, and people might have worked with him either in his former incarnations at the uh, as the uh, small business advocate in the GoBiz office, or as uh, head lead center SBD BDC director down in Long Beach area. Um, so I want to welcome both of the, both of you to our webinar. We're going to start with federal policy from Anne because um, there's um, there's a lot going on, um, but I think uh, it's kind of crunch time for states. So we might get into a little bit more of a discussion with the state stuff, and um, it's also five o'clock on the East Coast time. So we'll let Anne go. So um, Anne, I want you to take it away. Okay, thank you. Um, it's This is my second day in a row of being on a panel or uh, the same um, presentation as folks that are doing state or local. And so I think it's a really good idea because often what gets originated in the states ends up in the federal um, arena or vice versa. So uh, the more that we know what each of us are doing in the state and the federal arena, I think is, a, is really good for Cameo. So uh, let me just start off by saying that uh, Carolina, uh, the highlight for us was uh, being able to have Carolina Martinez um, uh, testify before the House Small Business Subcommittee on economic growth, tax and capital access um, it, on March 7th. I mean, I don't think I need to probably tell this audience how hard it is to get a witness slot in the, in the US Congress. Uh, but, you know, Carolina did a great job and it was all about uh, should the Congress put forth legislation making changes to the SBA microloan program. Thankfully, the discussion was not should the program stay or go, it was what can we do to make it better? So we, she had some suggestions. One, eliminate the 155th rule. Um, to eliminate uh, any kind of percentage on post and pre-loan technical assistance. Right now, that's a 50-50, but we think that an artificial percentage is just an artificial percentage, that the technical assistance providers are really the people who should uh, make that determination. Um, three, uh, we ask for access to microloan program data. Uh, that is not readily available. Um, I know I spent, I think, six months getting um, a FOIA processed and some of that information uh, for, you know, someone who had requested it. Um, it shouldn't be that way. 7A uh, loan uh, data is pretty readily available. There's really no reason why the microloan program shouldn't have that data. It will help organizations like Cameo better understand where it's being utilized, how it's being utilized, what amounts are being utilized, all of those things that make, uh, that would make for a better program. And then fourth, um, we asked for robust, she, uh, uh, Caroline asked for robust funding for the microloan program and also put in a plug for uh, predatory lending protections and the, you know, the issues that you worked on in California, trying to make sure that um, small businesses know what they're getting into when they get a loan. Um, so that was really the highlight, but that wasn't all she did when she was here. <laughs> Next slide, Heidi. <laughs> oh, back one. Yeah. Um, uh, the other thing that happens when Carolina rolls into Washington, and actually Heidi was here too, is that there's a lot of meetings that are being set up. Um, no, you had the right slide. That, that's the slide. Um, there are a lot of meetings that we set up for Carolina uh, to uh, have discussions with folks in D.C. that directly impact 
what Cameo does in California. So we had, she had meetings with the SBA Office of Capital Access, with USDA Office of Rural Development. Um, that one in particular um, keeps on kind of changing. So I think she found some potential new funding sources that she hadn't, uh, that we weren't aware of before. Um, that was a critical one. We always have California delegation meetings in the House and the Senate to make sure that the congressional delegation knows who Cameo is and what their mission is. Um, also, House and Senate small business committees really uh, run the microloan program and, and other programs that Cameo cares about. And so those are always critical um, meetings to have as well. Uh, the California perspective is always appreciated because California, you know, I, I keep on saying is its own country. Uh, you know, it's big, it has innovative ideas. So folks, Republicans and Democrats in the Congress are always very open to hearing what Cameo has to say. Um, next slide. Uh, a new SBA administrator um, actually has not been appointed, but has been nominated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, and that is Jovita Carranza. Jovita uh, comes, to, uh, comes to the SBA after having been the number two uh, person, like the deputy, during the Bush administration and under Steve Preston when he was the administrator. Jovita's background is uh, co comes from uh, UPS where she'll happily tell you that she had to start out like everybody else did driving a truck and making deliveries and working her way up. Um, uh, and then uh, she has most recently uh, been the US treasurer um, uh, in this administration, which is you know, kind of largely a ceremonial role, uh, but nevertheless, um, one that she, I think, has really enjoyed, but her heart and soul really is with the SBA. I think we can all um, breathe a sigh of relief that she's the nominee because she understands every program in the place. So if there's somebody who can kind of is ready to get their hands dirty and start working on improvements in programming, that would be Jovita. I expect that the Senate right now, um, a nominee goes through the process of being vetted. So that's what the Small Business Committee in the Senate is doing. But I expect it won't be very long until there's a hearing to confirm her. And I expect that she will be confirmed. Next slide. We're gonna talk a little bit about legislation that we're, that's uh, currently that we're working on or that's been introduced. And so pay, piggybacking on Carolina's testimony, the Senate, um, Senator Duckworth actually introduced a microloan bill that we worked with Cameo on, uh, they did, and um, they worked with this team to try to make sure that as much of Carolina's testimony and her recommendations got into the bill, and a lot of it did. Um, eliminate the 155th rule is the major, you know, is probably the biggest one. And I just need to tell you all that that has been a sticking point for as long as I've been working on this, on these issues. So that's kind of a long time. Um, and uh, all of a sudden, the I don't know, the winds changed. Uh, chairman changed, and lo and behold, everybody seems to be on board with getting rid of the 155th rule. Um, it also raises the aggregate amount of debt inter inter intermediaries from six to seven million. It gives SBA the authority to loan inter intermediaries three million a year after the first year. Um, the bill raises the grant amount for technical assistance uh, for each intermediary from 25% to 30%. Um, it requires the SBA to issue a report to Congress and make public uh, publicly available the data on the number of small businesses that remain in business, the number of jobs created or retained, and the impact of the elimination of the 155th rule on rural areas. That's always been the sticking point with that rule. 
um, uh, they've always been, the Congress has always been worried that the rural areas will get left behind. So this was put in there just as um, uh, a care, uh, you know, a concession to those who worry about this saying, well, let's just study it and let's see what happens if it's eliminated, if in fact um, it is, it impacts rural areas. Um, the bill also authorizes the following levels of, for microloan, for the microloan program, 80 million in technical assistance, 58.85 million in direct loans. Um, that's much higher, but that's over a two year period. And Senator Duckworth wants to raise the authorization. She thinks that it's too low. So in order to appropriate, you have to have an authorization at that level. And so that's what she's trying to do in this, in this bill. The second thing that we've, that we've been working with Cameo on is um, a bill that was introduced by Senator Cardin. It's S-1077. And it's a bill on um, re-entry for incarcerated individuals. It's called the New START Act. It, it uh, is designed to provide both dollars and entrepreneur, entrepreneurial development uh, training. Uh, it was introduced in April. Cameo wrote a letter of support. Uh, and what it really does is it establishes a pilot program that requires the SBA to award annual grants to at least six organizations or partnerships. Um, there's three stipulations to uh, being able to get the awards. Um, one, it ha the organization has to provide entrepreneurial development training to formerly incarcerated individuals. It has to demonstrate ties with the business and the returning citizens' communities. Um, it would have to partner with lenders in the existing SBA microloan program, um, and which would uh, which would provide grants to qualifying participants. It sounds a, a lot like the Prime program, to be very honest, the same idea, but it's under a different bucket, and it's it's a new bucket. Um, this is how the Congress um, started the Veterans Program, by the way. Uh, same mm -hmm. thing, they started with a pilot, and um, awarded a few grants and then have expanded it based on good outcomes um, of the data. Mm, interesting. And this is Heidi. I have a question on 90, 996. What is the, what's the prognosis for it moving forward? So the reason it's Tammy Duckworth is that she's a member of the Small Business Committee. And Senator Rubio is now the chair of the committee. And one of his objectives that he told his staff is that he wants every member of the committee to be able to author legislation. It didn't matter to him whether they're a Republican, Democrat. He wants to make sure that everybody has a chance at getting legislation passed through the committee that is impactful. And so this bill is um, largely, um, I think, has pretty broad support. Um, I think the I think the Republicans, um, with the assurance that there will be uh, impact data on rural areas, um, I think they'll pr they're probably open to this. It seems like everybody's on board in the Senate. Um, I don't know about the House, but really, what's been happening lately is um, since. Uh, Congresswoman Velezquez from New York is the chair because the Democrats took control of the House. Um, there seems to be a, really a lot of cooperation among all four, they call it the four corners, which is House Republicans and Democrats on their committee, Senate Republicans and Democrats on their committee. There seems to be a real effort to get things passed and to get consensus. So I would say that it's pretty good. Interesting, that's, that's a bright spot. <laughs> I know, you know, the things we work on have lots of bright spots. It's just the general media that you have to ignore because there's never a bright spot there. Um, okay, I wanna turn to the next slide, which is appropriations. Um, and then I realize my time is almost done. Um, I'm just going to uh, give you this chart um, just show you what that cameo on the right hand side 
has requested these amounts for 2020 and um, and it shows you FY19, it shows you what was appropriated. So it's about a 10% increase um, is what Cameo requests for this, um, for 2020. Um, we have submitted all the requests to the House because they have deadlines. So the House people all got these requests and the Senate will start theirs shortly and we'll do the same. We'll um, make sure that the Senate appropriators all get um, Cameo's recommendations. And just so everybody knows, we do check in with our um, SPDC and our women's business and our other partners um, as to make, make sure we're asking in line what, what they're asking for and kind of reinforcing those, those. Right, we don't do it in a vacuum. You're absolutely right. Um, the, the one outlier I would say is the women's business centers. Um, the House, I mean, the, the Senate committee has told me both uh, Republicans and um, Democrats that what's necessary um, to get that number up is a reauthorization first. So, um, and the, both committees are actually going to take a look this Congress, so that means this year and next year, and basically reviewing every single program at SBA and reauthorizing it. There, it's a massive effort. It hasn't been done in a long, long time and it needs to. So it's really all about modernizing it. So any ideas that anybody has that you wanna to send to Heidi who will then send it to us with respect to how SBA programs could be better, this is the time to do it. And we, we will accept any and all comments and pass them on. We won't attribute your name to it unless you tell us to. Um, but they, they really right now are open to all of our suggestions. And that's it for us. Great. Does anybody have, I'll just go, this is just to put these other um, pieces up, um, the Treasury pieces and um, the USDA program. So you can see also a 10% increase. Um, um, does anybody have any questions for Ann that they'd like to? You can click on your little microphone and unmute yourself and go ahead and chat and ask Ann a question. I do know, Ann, there was a question um, that I brought up to Jennifer earlier today in a conversation that we had about the minority business development agencies um, and asked her to, um, some of our friends have, um, I, I believe there's only four in California, but they're friends and they're part of our community and we've heard some troubling rumors. Um, we're hoping that it's just could be, um, you know, Trump's budget landing like a thud um, and that it's not, not um, something that's widespread, a widespread thought, but um, if you could look into that, I know that was something that people wanted, to, wanted okay. us to investigate. Um, so I don't know what the, um, we'll definitely look into it. I don't, I don't know what the proposed funding was uh, for, uh, from the Trump budget, but I, I have to tell you with the Democrats in control of the House, I just don't see those going away to be very honest. Um, that doesn't mean you don't fight for it and you don't advocate for it. But I'm just saying that it's probably more due to the administration's wishes rather than what the appropriators are saying. Okay, great. Does yeah. anybody else have any questions on federal issues that they want to ask Ann? Knowing what? Michelle, Jesse, <laughs> I see you on the no. yeah. um, Just a quick question. I know we're pushing for more, but will we at least get um, renewed at the 18 and a half million? Um, for what? For the Women's Business Center, I'm sorry. Um, for, uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, yes, it's, it's likely. Uh, I think uh, everybody told me that 18, 18.5, something like that is what you can expect. Okay, thank you. So you're not, you're not going to get a cut is, you know, what I, what I think the answer is but you're just not going to get a big bump like this until the authorization has been done. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. 
Heidi, can you hear me? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, my question is uh, related to the STEP program. Uh, I know there was a hearing uh, regarding its effectiveness, and I was curious if you had any um, feedback or heard anything from that hearing. Well, the hearings um, like that one are part of, it's a, it's a nine part series where they're literally examining every part. Um, so there were no conclusions. Um, I know when I talked to the staff, um, their concern, uh, one of their concerns that they raised with me was kind of where the STEP program, like the recipients of the STEP program, where they're located. Um, apparently they'd heard from some, some folks that, you know, it's largely universities and a lot of uh, that, that presents a barrier to women, um, some minority folks, you know, who don't feel comfortable rolling into, you know, a huge university to try to access this program. I know that's a concern that somebody raised. I don't know, um, you know, if they if they're thinking about trying to figure out if there's a better way to do things with respect to who gets the the grants. Um, but I know that's a concern to make sure that the people that need access, uh, all entrepreneurs have access rather than just a few. Got it, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's legitimate. I hear from uh, women business owners, I, I also, I represent a lot of women business owners across the country and I hear from them routinely that that's a barrier. So, um, you know, to the extent that they can make sure the program is um, accessible, um, I think is a good thing. Any other questions for Ann? Going once, going twice. Well, Ann and your team, thank you so much for spending some time with us this afternoon. Absolutely, um, thank you. Really appreciate it. Um, and now we're gonna turn our attention over to state policy. That we're kind of in the thick of it here. Um, there's bills coming at us at all angles. As you know, I was out for a couple weeks but I was out for a couple weeks um, and so I'm catching up a little bit on our support letters but um, I'm going to turn it over to Jesse Torres to talk a little bit about some of the bills um, and I, I think Gabe is on the phone well one of the bills I know Gabe is very um, is an expert in, so we'll ask him to chime in on that um, but these are some of the things that we're looking at at the state policy there's a whole bunch of bills there's the TAPE and the TAP program. That's the state investment in small business development that California made last year. Yay, go us and all our friends making that happen and all of you guys. And as well as the, this is the DBO and SB 1235. We're basically just watching that. We've submitted, um, so we've submitted an extensive, um, I call it Lewis's, uh, Lewis Cadet's Peck's extensive dissertation on responsible business lending and what a regulation should look at. He should really get some kind of honorary PhD from some, somewhere or MBA or something because um, he um, wrote a really good piece on um, what good responsible business lending legislation should look like and why. Um, we're, we've submitted those comments to DBO and now they're coming up with a regulation. So we're our main, our main goal right now with the DVO is making sure that those regulations come out good. They haven't, there hasn't been any regulations listed yet for public comment. When it does, we'll be sure to bring those to your attention. So I'm going to turn it over to Jesse now. Um, Jesse, thanks as always. Jesse sits on our Cameo board, and he's also on the policy committee along with Mark Herbert, who's also on the phone. So if you do want to chime in um, and ask a question, I think we're, Feel free and just unmute yourself, as I said, the microphone button um, has a red line through it or it doesn't have a red line through it. It's kind of obvious on how, how this works with you. So thanks, everybody. And Jesse, take it away. Sure thing. Thanks, Actually, Heidi. You're welcome. Jesse, um, I'm going to ask you one favor if you could yeah. take us off speaker. Take us off speaker? Okay. Yeah, that would be great. How is this? 
Thumbs up. Okay. Uh, well, thanks everybody. It's a pleasure to be on this webinar uh, in this capacity as an entrepreneur myself. Uh, you might know me from my role as the uh, state small business advocate with GoBiz, and now I'm a partner with a uh, consulting firm based in Los Angeles called The Bill Order. But it's a pleasure to be part of the uh, Cameo team and part of the policy committee. Um, so as Heidi mentioned, there's a number of different bills that have already been introduced, and we're already uh, sorting through everything and trying to understand our priorities for Cameo. Uh, there are a few that we did want to touch upon, um, but before I get into that, I did want to extend a congratulations to Heidi, who uh, the reason why she was out of the office for a while was because she was getting married and had to go on her honeymoon as well. So congrats, Heidi. It's good to have you back. Uh, so the first bill that I want to talk about is AB 474, and I really want to turn it back over to Heidi to talk about this bill, which involves essentially moving the CalCap program from Treasurer's Office to the IBank, the California Economic Development and Infrastructure Bank. And I know that there's been a lot of work that's been around this bill uh, since uh, last year, uh, when a bill was introduced underway. So, so um, Heidi, uh, do you mind if I bring you back? Sure. And I'm going to pass the buck yet again and ask Gabe to chime in here. But um, uh, Gabe, I'm going to unmute you. Um, hopefully you're there. Awesome. Um, oh. Great. Um, so at, at 474, AB 474 is um, a sort of a revival of SB 551, which was the Hueso bill, which we supported, and um, Opportunity Fund um, was intimately involved in getting that, getting that to the stage that it got to. It, it went all the way, basically, <laughs> all, all the way, except I'll let Gabe take it away, um, which is, you know, which would have been it was kind of confusing. There was a last minute on that. Um, so it's being revived. So Gabe, um, tell us a, a little bit it, what it was. Jesse mentioned it moved the CalCap program over to the iBank um, from Treasury over to GoBiz. Why we why that's happening and um, getting more guidance. Yeah, I think Gabe, there's a lot of background noise. It does seem like there's a lot. Of noise. Give me just tomorrow. one sure. second. Sure. Um. So that's a basic. The, it's it's right now sitting in the treasurer's office, um, and there's been there's been some changes to the program over the past couple of years that Cameo Opportunity Fund and Cameo and a lot of other micro lenders have been working toward yeah toward um, making those changes in the program work for lenders. Unfortunately, they couldn't come to an agreement with the treasurer's office. Um, and so the bill um, was moved, the bill instead moves it to the iBank, who um, I think the players and the stakeholders feel understand the needs of small businesses and the lenders better. Gabe, I'll let you take it from there. Hello? Uh, can you all hear me? Yep. Okay. Excellent. Uh, Heidi and Jesse, thank you for that background. Um, so AB 474 is a pretty simple good governor. Um, so I'm getting a bit of an echo. So uh, we don't hear the picture. echo, just so you know. You can you can hear the echo. We cannot hear the echo if you if you're on your computer and you're on your phone. That's probably why. Gotcha. Okay. So you should probably mute one of them. Mute your computer speakers and get. Except we cannot hear you. Gabe, if you're talking, there you go. Gabe? Okay, now yeah. can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, so, uh, AB 474 is um, essentially just a, a basic good governance bill moving the small business uh, focused California Capital Access Program, or CalCap, uh, to the uh, small business focused 
uh, Governor's Office of Business Oversight, GoBiz, which is housed under iBank. Um, it's currently kind of as, as Jesse and Heidi had mentioned, it's currently under um, the California Balloon Control Financing Authority, uh, which is under the Treasurer's Office and doesn't have a specific mission of supporting um, small businesses. Uh, although the program has existed there for some time, uh, you know, we as an enrolled lender, we have concerns about the way the program has been run. Um, the, these concerns are shared by several enrolled lenders, some of whom may actually be on this call um, and who we've probably been working on uh, with this issue for several years. Uh, some of the changes that have come through in recent years have included limiting the number of restructures um, that, we can, that we can do for loans enrolled in the program um, to only uh, a single six month change in terms uh, for each loan with a, just a, a bevy of additional paperwork and sort of bureaucracy to run through. So it's, it, it's slow and this, these kinds of changes were implemented against the express lender feedback saying, please don't do this. This is a capital access program. You're going to limit our ability uh, to actually provide uh, access, access to capital if you do this and make it harder for lenders uh, and make it harder for borrowers to actually, actually pay back. Um, we give feedback on, they've made several of these types of changes. We've given feedback on all of them saying, please don't do this. And the um, authority seems to have just kind of like charged ahead uh, full steam with a lot of these different changes. And so we think that the program itself should really exist um, under uh, iBank and GoBiz, uh, where there's a, sp a specific mission of uh, small business, uh, supporting small business lending, supporting small businesses. And um, in this way, it can also exist along the suite of other um, small business support programs, um, like, like, the, like the ones run by the FDCs, um, all kind of in one place. So that's AB 474. Um, I'm the point of contact on the bill. Uh, so if you have any questions, please, please feel free to email me at gabriel.opportunityfund.org. Uh, we'd love to have your support. The bill is up for a hearing on Tuesday uh, in the Jetty Committee, uh, which starts at 9 a.m. Yeah, I, unfortunately, Gabe, a lot, most of us, a lot of us will be at the um, Micro Lending Forum, um, which is a sold out event, which I'm happy to see. So we will. Congratulations. Be, yeah, we will not be able to um, attend the hearing, but we wish you all the luck and you know we'll be at the hearings if you need us. Yeah. So I'm guessing um, since it passed, it passed all the committees last year. I'm guessing, hopefully, that you'll have the same thing and that there's there's a different outcome when it comes to the governor signing the bill. So, um, anyway, back, yep. <laughs> back to you, Jesse. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you, Gabe. Uh, so just to run through some of the other bills, uh, just really briefly that we're taking a look at, and these are bills right now that we're positive on. So this includes things like uh, AB 742, this is from Cervantes, was uh, focused on creating a place-based economic strategy effort. Um, and uh, what we're excited about with this bill is that it'll include small business partners um, and involve them in the planning around this place-based economic strategy work. This would uh, create that, that position under COVID. In addition, we are looking at, and uh, let me just bring up my list. Uh, AB 906, which is uh, also focused on creating a plan for economic development. Uh, so we're looking to be sober on that. There's a uh, bill AB 1545. This is from Older Multi, which focuses on providing a remedy for small businesses in regards to civil violations so they can fix the violations for a reduced penalty. And there's also a number of procurement bills related to small businesses that we are also going to be positive on. Uh, that includes things like uh, AB 1365, uh, which is a DBBE participation program uh, bill. And there's a number of others that uh, we're also taking a look at. Um, Jesse, I want to chime in on one of those, sure. on, the two, on the two plans, the economic development plan bills and the place-based strategies. It kind of, um, the place-based strategy one jives with a lot of the work that we've been doing on the do-it-yourself economy or what we're now talking about, um, 
it's the same thing, local economic, on, local entrepreneurial ecosystems, which is promoting the five, using the five C's and supporting the five C's, coaching, capital, connections, um, climate, which is policy, and culture to um, promote small business development and incorporating those kind of strategies into economic development. So it kind of jives with what we're doing. And the, the, the one that creates a plan that made the state of California do an economic development plan, um, cameo plans to try and get on the stakeholder group. So anybody who can help us do that, <laughs> we'd, um, we'd, we'd much appreciate it. Absolutely, thanks Heidi. Um, the other bill I want to mention is AT, it's AB 1577. This is from Burke. Uh, the bill builds on the existing law that encourages cities and counties to access micro enterprise development for job creation, uh, requires California communities and public agencies that serve them to engage micro enterprise development providers for input on effective systems to support and effectively partner with micro enterprises. Uh, so, you know, look and see how the, we can support that effort as well. Um, there were also additional bills that Cameo is taking a look at. Uh, we're, we're having ongoing conversation as far as the degree of support. Um, and uh, that involves, uh, you know, some, I don't know, it's a controversial issue, but definitely uh, uh, an item that we are definitely gonna to want to take to our membership to get there. Uh, and it might be best even knowing that Heidi, you just had, again, you had so much background on this bill. But did you want to talk about that, the rate cap? Um, the rate cap bill um, is a Limon bill. It's mostly being brought by the asset building community. Um, the reason why we're interested in it because it's to put it, it would put a rate cap on loans from 2,500 to 10,000. This is consumer loans, but as we all know in the micro space, that those loans are often used for business purposes. Um, and we've got, we, we're trying also to engage the asset building community in responsible business lending through sort of this lens that a lot of small business lending at the lower levels is actually consumer our consumer products. So our in, it, what it would do is put a cap of 36% plus a bank rate on it. And I can't remember, I think it's up to a 42%, like a max 42%. Um, and I did um, reach out to, I haven't had a chance to look at it today, but I did reach out to the Center for Responsible Lending, got a state-by-state -state comparison um, there's 30, I think there's something like 37 states that have rate caps on this type of loan. So um, it's not something that's out of the ordinary. It's not something that um, is coming from the left coast. It's something that is, um, you know, that's out there across the country. Um, so I know some people are for, I, I guess the arguments we've had, some internal arguments we've had is that um, you know, well, first of all, rate cap, you know, everybody, 36% is really high, um, but, and plus, you know, plus the bank rate, 36% um, is really high, but then the other thing is, well, some of these, um, uh, if, if, you know, there, if this is the only product available um, to someone, sh should it be available? I guess it could be a good question to ask. Should you actually borrow money if it's, if it's um, more than that, maybe you should try and find some other kind of solution to whatever problem you have. Um, or, um, but should, you know, will it have unintended consequences of limiting access to capital? You know, if, if people are using it as a one-time thing and sort of get that it's gonna be a high interest rate and just that, you know, they need something to tie them over before that big thing comes in, then great. Um, but if it's, it's something that people are using as a means of financing, like paying rent and stuff like that. They probably either need to move, they need to take a different, different tack because it's it'll lead to, in my opinion, it'll lead to a financial ruin. So, I know that easier said than done, in many ways. Um, but um, there's, we we have to find a different solution than um, I'm, I'm now putting in my um, my two cents, which I probably shouldn't. So. You definitely should, Heidi. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, that, 
I forgot to mention that the bill number is uh, AB 539, it's uh, Limon and Grayson. Yeah. I think at this point, uh, we would definitely appreciate uh, input, feedback, comments from our members. Uh, you know, what do you think? Uh, you know, we all have our own experiences and um, thoughts around this issue. It, coming from a technical assistance world, knowing that uh, for some entrepreneurs, um, sometimes they prefer to use this kind of lending uh, tool. And um, as long as the transparency of the rate is there, you know, they're fine with it. However, there's a lot of concern about, you know, people taking advantage of, being taken advantage of, and uh, yeah. we want to be thoughtful about that. Yeah, if you want to do it anonymously, I'm not sure how to do the best way to do it, but if you don't want to say who you are, whether you believe or not believe, you know, you think Canada should support a rate cap, it's something, I mean, we're looking for excuses to support it because we believe in responsible, you know, I think the responsible business lending end of it is, is important. Um, if you're paying a rate more than 42%, you probably shouldn't be borrowing money in the first place. Um, so, I, like I said, I know it's easier said than done in many situations, and maybe that's an insensitive thing, but we should be helping people in other ways than letting them get into such predatory um, lending situations. Um, but if you want to do it anonymously, that, that's my that, that's my opinion. If you want to do it anonymously, you can maybe drop us a line and just don't to put a return address. Um, our address is on the Kimmy thing. If you don't care, then please do email me. And I do want to say, you don't have to write all these bill numbers down. We'll make sure that we send out a list of the ones that we're going to give people on this call. So, so uh, just as far as other items that we're taking a look at, uh, we're watching the independent contractor versus employee um, ongoing discussion, evolution, just keep an eye on that. And then um, as it relates to the, the state programs, uh, the small business technical assistance program and the technical assistance program. And I want to apologize because I am the one that actually named those programs. And I know that it can be confusing and it's my fault. So I apologize for that. But uh, we know from our members that there could be questions and uh, in feedback in regards to the implementation of those programs. Um, you know, just one thing that I want to share is some good news that my uh, replacement at GoBase has been named. Uh, her name is Isabel Guzman. She's a great friend. Uh, she was the former Deputy Chief of Staff to SBA Administrator Maria Contreras Sweet. Uh, I believe she started this week at GoBiz, and I know that she'll be interacting with all of our members in regards to those two grant programs. I knew but, her name sounded familiar. I couldn't. Yeah, she's great. Place. Okay, that's great. And um, everybody knows that Maria Controsi is an LA person, so she was like, she was a fan of Cameo, so she's a she's a friend too. Yeah, she's great. She's both great. <laughs> uh, but I, I know that we're applying to have her come and engage with our members uh, and we're trying to arrange that uh, so you can ask a direct time with her but if you have questions regarding those programs uh, you know she is the best person to contact and uh, seek uh, answers from um, and I think at this point I guess I'll turn it back over to you Heidi to talk about DBO one two three five yeah, I don't actually have anything to say. I said what I needed to say on DBO one two three five. We're just kind of waiting till they issue regulations now, and then we'll there'll be a concerted effort to make sure those regulations are what we want them to be. Hopefully, they just took everything lock, stock, and barrel <laughs> of our recommendations. I doubt that's probably the case, but um, yeah. Um, I did, the only other thing I want to say about responsible business lending is we started something here in California. There's been bubblings up in the in in other states and some interest at the federal level so that's that's it's really exciting to see something that we had such a hands-on um role in to kind of kind of push the envelope and do something you know on a grander scale um i think i'll open it up to questions now because i'm guessing jesse yeah we do want to know why you named them tape and tap <laughs> just kidding oh, <wow>. but <laughs> I'm not cracking up. Um, but 
but I was always wondering how they got their names. Um, um, does anybody have any questions for Jesse on the state bills that he, 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 he might be able to answer or might not be able to answer, might have to defer or any of the other bills or want to bring any other bill to our attention that they know of? These aren't the only bills we're looking at. Obviously, there's thousands, there's like a 2,000 bills that came out and I'd say probably 100 are related to small business in some way or another. We don't have the capacity to weigh in on all of them. So, um, you know, um, uh, well, we weigh in on what we can, but is there anything else that anybody else wants to bring up or bring to the larger group? Any other issues? Going once, going twice. I see somebody's trying to unmute themselves, maybe. Um, okay, well, if not, um, if there are, we're totally open to hearing from what you want us to work on. I know we will be working, as Jesse said, working with Isabel and getting some feedback to make sure tape and tap at the implementation of the state investment program are good and effective. I know there's been, um, the, I know GoBiz is still working out some of the kinks. Um, you know, it's, I guess, you know, having a new program start right at the switch of, um, switch of, <laughs> of, of uh, administration isn't the easiest thing to do, but, um, you know, hopefully we'll get those things ironed out. Um, I do know that the WBCs are interested in making the um, TAP program that was a $3 million carve out um, to help um, WBCs, MBDAs, the veteran business, um, the VBOX, I can't remember who else, one other group, um, kind of make sure that um, they're doing what they need to be doing to access the state money. I know there's an interest um, to making that long term as well as an interest in, in codifying the program, but there's no bills right now that codify the program apart from the five years. So that's, that's kind of, um, that'll be something that we'll be working on in the next couple of years. But um, any, anybody have any questions, comments? Open. All right, great. Well, then we'll just close with, um, uh, we are tentatively, we have not heard back, although let me check my cell phone. No, I did not hear back um, by the end of this. Um, we have a tentative um, yes from Isabel to speak with us on June 5th. We moved our advocacy day due to scheduling committees and she's trying to see if um, Lenny Mendoza is available as well just to kind of say hello. But Isabel is going to be the one who'd be working with us on the ground on, on these programs. So she's, she's the one who's going to be doing the work. So she's really the one um, who we want to talk to and who'll be in charge of um, convening the partners and getting the idea would be to here's, here's your opportunity to tell her how the program's working and what, how we can help her make this program successful and how she, how she can be successful and how she can say we create all these small businesses or the revenue generated grew, the access to capital grew um, because of the state investment and um, you know we want to really be able to help her make this uh, state investment pay off. It's, that's what our mission is. Um, we've also got some other um, VIPs that we've invited um, we're, that we're in the process of confirming um, and uh, we're uh, lunch, um, lunch will be on your own this time and we'll do visits and then we'll all get together and convene and see how the meetings went and if there's next steps and what we wanna do and what, how we wanna tackle things. Um, so stay tuned, we should be issuing um, a registration um, email sooner than later. Um, and if you guys remember, this is, does happen right around the time of our annual meeting, so it, it's, um, which is now going to actually be in September and is going to be a little bit larger of an event. Um, and it's going to be here in the San Francisco Bay Area. That's um, September 16th and 17th. So I did have some slides prepared on prepping for the meeting, but we don't have time. And I think most of you guys that are on the, on the call are seasoned, um, seasoned pros at this. So we'll just kind of go, just want to make sure everybody knows um, when our next webinar is. 
um, we're going to be talking about cybersecurity, keeping you and your clients safe online. And again, Jesse is going to be helping us get, get that together. I think he's been doing some work in this arena. Um, so we're excited and grateful to have him back next month. It's the Jesse show. I can't hit the video. <laughs> no, that's, yeah, um, we're fortunate to have a talented pool of people that we can draw from. So, um, and, and I think Jesse's going to bring, going to be bringing in some of his other co colleagues um, who are experts in this field and trying to make that, trying to put some cheese on the broccoli because this is something that we all need to work on. Um, uh, I know I personally need to work on it at home. I have all these things to, on my to-do list, but um, uh, gotta gotta just crank up the tunes and get to it and change passwords and things like that. But uh, anyway, so next next month is May 23rd at 2 p.m. I want to thank everybody for joining us. And, and, and if there's any last questions, comments, anybody wants to make, we want to thank Jesse, thank Anne. She, they're already they're already um, off the phone, but grateful grateful for your guidance and leadership. And anybody else want to say anything? Thank you, Heidi. Thanks, everyone. Have a lovely afternoon.